In this mini lecture, we're going to take a look at some of the logical fallacies that you may encounter as you're preparing your persuasive speech in the hope that you can try to avoid them. Now this is in by no means an exhaustive list of all of the logical fallacies, but I thought that I would highlight a few of the most common ones. Now, as we appeal to our audience during the persuasive speech, we need to consider that it is sometimes easy to develop faulty arguments, and we need to try to avoid these logical fallacies. The first one we'll talk about is the hasty generalization. This is where you draw a general conclusion without sufficient support material. For example, my grandmother was addicted to gambling, so gambling should be illegal. Well, one person being addicted to gambling does not necessarily support the argument that all gambling should be illegal. In order to avoid this hasty generalization, you want to be sure to have a significant number of current and quality information to argue from the specific to the general. Another logical fallacy is the faulty use of authority. Now we experience this uh, quite frequently when we look at commercial ads on television or in print media. This is where we're using information or testimony from someone who does not have a legitimate authority on the subject. So for example, Kevin Durant said that the KDs are the best basketball shoes. Now, I'm no expert on basketball shoes, and I do know who Kevin Durant is, and although I know that he does have his name attached to shoes, I'm not sure that I would judge him to be a, an authority on shoes and the soundness of shoes. If he was discussing basketball, that might elevate his authority. So be sure to use information from sources that are credible about your topic area. Ad hominem. This is where you're attacking the person instead of challenging the argument. This happens quite frequently in political de debates, and although I have not seen it often with persuasive speeches, you do want to focus your argument on the issues being presented and not on the people who are discussing them. The slippery slope. I'm sure many of you have heard of this one. This is arguing that a small event sets off a chain reaction of disaster. If you drop out of school, you will start taking drugs, become an alcoholic, and end up in jail. Now, I certainly would not advocate for anyone to drop out of school, but the act of dropping out of school does not necessarily mean that you will start taking drugs, become an alcoholic, and end up in jail. In order to avoid the slippery slope, you want to consider the middle ground, and don't be overly dramatic. An appeal to tradition is another appeal that is sometimes used. This is when you're assuming something is best or correct because it has always been done that way. My grandfather always drove a Ford truck, my father drives a Ford truck, so Ford must make the best truck. Now you're basing your claim, do not, in order to avoid this, base your claims on evidence such as facts, statistics, and testimony, and use tradition only to supplement that evidence. An appeal to tradition basically says we've always done it this way, so therefore we're, we need to continue doing it this way. The either or fallacy. This is where you are given the opportunity of only two options, and when there may actually be be more than just two options. You are either for prayer in schools or you are an atheist. Okay, that seems to be rather extremes of the situation. And the best solution is to never set up an either or argument and to be as inclusive as possible when you are offering options. Alienating your audience will not help your persuasive message. Another logical fallacy is the weak analogy. This is when you're comparing two or more things that are not really that closely related. So for example, guns are like hammers. They're both tools with metal parts that could be used to kill someone, and yet it would be ridiculous to restrict the purchase of hammers, so restrictions on purchasing guns are equally ridiculous. Now, I guess we could say that both of those are tools and that they do both have metal parts, but I'm not sure that the comparison would extend much beyond that. So in order to avoid the weak analogy, be sure that the things 
you are comparing are similar, at least in the characteristics important to your claim. The final appeal uh, log or logical fallacy we'll talk about is the appeal to pity. This is when an arguer tries to get people to accept a conclusion by making them feel sorry for someone. Now it is important to make emotional appeals, but we do not want to extend that too far. For in this example, I know the exam is graded based on performance, but you should give me an A. My cat's been sick, my car broke down, I've had a cold, so it was really hard for me to study. This would be an appeal to pity. Feel bad for me so that I get what I want. Children are remarkably um, skilled at trying to do this with their parents, of course. So in order to avoid this, make sure that you aren't simply trying to get your audience to agree with you by making them feel sorry for you. You always want to balance any emotional appeals that you're using with some facts and some statistics to back that up. So when you're preparing your persuasive speech, you need to carefully plan your evidence and make every effort to avoid these logical fallacies.